Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Young Entrepreneur Syndicate podcast. You've got myself, Jim Riley, and Rod Puntz here. Rod, good morning, afternoon. Good morning and good afternoon. I'll say them both. You know what? When you're grinding, uh, sometimes I lose track of what time it is. Last night, I was working out at 11 o'clock in the snow at night. I got two days left of 75 hard. It was so glorious out last night. But, um, you know, this morning, I was like, what, what time is it? Where, <laughs> where am I at? Where am I supposed to be? <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. My, my day started. My alarm went off at 3 a.m. this morning. Oh, man. And, uh, I was working at, at 3.45, so I'm still charged up. I still have that morning adrenaline rush going. Well, you know, speaking of that morning adrenaline rush and, and schedules and early mornings, late nights, I mean, it is December 1st. We're right into the thick of the holiday season. We're, we're just a little bit post Thanksgiving and, you know, everybody's gearing up for Christmas. The stores are busy. Online's busy, you know, um, traffic's getting, you know, everything's happening right now. And what I thought would be an interesting topic is, you know, having some holiday ba balance, not only in your personal life, but also business, because I think we miss that through the holidays. So um, if you want to open a little discussion about that, I think I think it would be of good value for people to start thinking about holiday balance as they get into the month of December. Right. And. You know, you think there are two things that happen, I for me at least. There's there's the excitement, you know, the, the shopping, the hustle, the bustle, you know, the, the music's playing, the lights are twinkling, the traffic's going, and you know, you can get into that mode and and it's exciting. You know, it, it's why it's you know most people's favorite time of the year. But there's also, you know, walk into a, a store this time of year. And the crowds and the press and the push. And so you talk about balance. You know, you've, you've got all this good holiday cheer. And on the other end of it, you've got the holiday stress. Yeah. Right. And then you've got, well, I'd like to take more time off. But, you know, the the boss is requiring more hours. You know, retail, you know, the, the salespeople are stressed. They're, they're, everyone's being pushed right now. And this is something that, that I've always learned, you know, in the military, uh, in business, you always look for the pinch points, right? Where where things come together and they get bottlenecked and pinched up. And the holidays, for all the goodness that they bring, is a pinch point in our lives. So we have to find ways to keep that flow going, you know, the, the positive workflow going, as well as the positive personal home life flow going. And where everyone has a different pinch point. And we have to identify. That's the first thing I'd say is identify your pinch point, both in your business and in your personal life, and then find start looking for those solutions. That's a great way to describe it because you're right about that. And I don't think we really look at it that way, but it's the reality, you know, because I, like, for example, just talking with my wife about our schedule this weekend, it's Thursday. We have something Friday night. We have something Saturday night. And we have something Sunday night. And, you know, our pinch point is going to be leading into each one of those nights. It's how we uh, manage or map out the earlier part of those days where we'll have relief or stress, right? right. And, and I think that when you come into the holidays, you really need to, if you're not typically a planner, maybe become a little bit of a planner over the holiday season so that you can map out your personal life, your visits, family comings and goings your shopping time so you're not in the stores on Christmas Eve trying to get that last thing. Right. Um, but as well as you can still find some success in your work and feel good about the job that you're doing there. But it definitely requires a little bit more organization than the rest of the year and some planning. Um, and to your point, so you don't hit that pinch point and all of a sudden the world collapses around you. You're right. And Two things that you talk about balance, Jim. You know, it's where do you find that balance? I'll tell you where you can find the balance. And it's it's the scheduling, right? There's that part of it, the planning and scheduling, and that's where it starts. But because this time of year has all these other, you know, family obligations, for example, and for anyone with children out there or grandchildren out there, all of a sudden you've got holiday concerts to go to and dance recitals that get in. There's still sports going on. So you've still got the games to go to. 
So all of those things become very important and, and you don't want to miss them. So to go along with planning and scheduling, I'm going to say flexibility and adapting to change, you yeah. know, because you you have to be able to be flexible with your schedule and not be holding yourself so accountable to that schedule that you you get frustrated or flustered when you have to make a change, a last minute change. So just be ready for change and, and embrace it. Actually, I think flexibility is such a huge factor in your happiness through these pinch point seasons, right? Because oftentimes we get so wrapped up in this is how we do it every day that you forget to be flexible or you forget that you can be flexible. Right. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so so my wife, uh, she just got out of a surgery a couple of weeks ago. And so she's not doing as much as she used to around the house. One of her things is she loves the place vacuum. You know, that's just her thing. She likes the vacuum, you know. So the other night, it didn't get done in the day, obviously, because I was busy. But she was putting the kids to bed. And I thought, you know, I'm going to vacuum real quick. It's nine o'clock at night, which is, you know, most people would be vacuuming at night. She's like, what are you doing? I said, well, I know this is important to you. And you like to start your day, you know, with a clean house. I'm going to do it now. So it doesn't have to be done in the morning. And that's just it's just an example of flexibility or switching around a schedule a little bit so you can find that peace and harmony that you normally have, right? And that's a silly example, but there's much larger examples, whether that's feeding schedules for your animals, looking outside, right? Right. Um, <laughs> or, or times that you do specific things, look at the opportunity to be flexible with that and find some relief there so you don't get pinched into those curves. Right. And it's easy to, to become flexible if you practice flexibility, right? Just like yoga, the more the more you you adapt and and are are able to do that, the less likely it is to be a stressor on you. And it's just like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, it's like you know, peri peri thrust, you know, or or counter punching, you know, you go here, I'm gonna I'm gonna weave over here, and we do the same thing with our our schedules in our lives, and even in business, you know, even if you're, it, it, I'm gonna look at retail right now because that's the big focus with. Christmas and you go into these shops and all of a sudden somebody's doing a return, you know, somebody's in line and it's, it's going to bottleneck it all up. And you just have to roll with that. It's just, that's part of, you should schedule that in. Or even if you don't schedule it, be prepared for it, mentally prepared for obstruction, you know, just be mentally prepared for it. And it's going to make it easier. It, it blows me away when people go into those scenarios, you know, they see the return. Look, you and I can almost guarantee bet on uh, the day after Christmas, there's going to be a line at the return counter at any of the big box stores. Like, you know, you can bank on that. If you got to make a return, you need to be prepared for the obstruction of time because it's going to be there, you know, and, and it blows me away when people show up to those situations and they're instantly pissed. Are they complaining about how long the line is? Like, give it a week. That line will be gone. Yeah. You don't have to return that item right here, right now. You know, give it a week, have some patience, and the line will dissipate, right? Or know what you're getting into. It's just like there's nothing more frustrating for me. I'm sure, Rod, you know, back in the days when you were traveling a lot via air, when you go to the airport and you see people running through the airport and they're pushing their way around, they're stressed, you know, you could just tell that they got issues going on, but yet, everybody in line with them all of a sudden is infected because they didn't plan accordingly. Right. Right. They didn't get up early enough. They didn't drive, you know, like we're all paying for their problems. And right. I think we need to be a little bit more cognizant of that. But like you said, prepare for the obstructions. Right. And the other thing is just be nice. Yeah. You know, let's, let's keep that Christmas cheer, you know, the smile on your face and everyone wants to be happy. Why can't we extend that through the holiday season to the return season and beyond, you know, into the, the upcoming year? And we, we don't have to wait for that. Well, I think uh, if, you, if you do the season correctly, you might just come out of it with some new habits of being nice, preparing yeah. for obstructions, planning and mapping out your day as it relates to what's going on, right? Uh, having a new habit of being flexible when it's needed. So if you do the holiday right, you can come out in January a better person. 
Well, I'm I'm going to throw this out there too for anyone watching that that has staff, right? If you, if you're in business and you you've got staff or even business partners, let's while we're going through this whole season, let's practice not just being nice, but let's practice being appreciative of our staff. Let them know how much you appreciate them showing up to work, showing up with a smile on their face, going through the the bottlenecks with you. You know, because if if your staff knows you appreciate the effort and the extra stress that they're under, it's going to make everything go smoother, you know, for for the people who come in with a an attitude or a chip. Um, you know, it it starts at the top, I guess is what I'm saying. It starts at the top and the managers and the frontline supervisors need to be sending this message downstream so that when that happens, the waters are going to be clearer, not clouded up from it. You know, dilute it, dilute everything with kindness. And it's gonna go, it's gonna go better for everyone. I'm glad we're recording this because these are some nuggets that are just falling out of the sky here. Well, hopefully people are paying attention. Maybe you're on the, the highway driving down the road, your commute to work is good for good way to start your day is think about some kindness and changing of your schedules. Rod, that kind of leads me to uh another topic that I wanted to cover today, uh, which goes along with the holidays, and that's distractions. You know, uh, I just got off a, a call with one of our young entrepreneur syndicate members, and we were talking about, you know, working from home. We're entrepreneurs, and you're juggling that home balance and what's happening in your household, but yet you're trying to run a business. And distractions become a major factor. And uh, the elimination of those distractions is so important to your success. I'm wondering. I know I've got a few, but I'd like to, if you have any tips and tricks on how to avoid distractions while working from home or, or in your business in general, but especially during the holiday season. Yeah, well, that, that's a really good question and a very good point because I've, I've worked from home both when I had children and then with grandchildren and then it's mostly just my wife and I now, but we still juggle grandkids and, and help our kids out when they're having surgeries and that sort of thing. And and those again are those things you just have to be flexible with. Things come up, things happen, and and we want to be there for that. But the it comes down first, I think, to scheduling. And when you're working, you're working, right? So if you've got that mapped out, you it, my family knew if, if I'm in my my work office and the door's closed, I'm working, right? I'm not gonna answer the phone, I'm not gonna take a call unless I get two calls from family. Right. They know if they call once and, and then hang up and then call right back, I'm going to interrupt whatever I'm doing and take that call. Right. Yeah. My family is first. So we have a, our own cues that that we've always used. If it's two calls, I'll take the call. But other than that, it's a work is work. It's just like if you're not there. But it's nice to just be sharing that same space. And that's what I think people who work from home have to get used to is just enjoying the fact that the person isn't spending an extra hour commuting, that they are home. So even though they're they're not going to engage with you, even though they're in the next room, they're home. And they're not going to spend an extra half an hour or an hour on the road to get there. They're going to spend that quality time with you once the clock is done ticking. You know, So part of that is just it, it's a habit that you have to get into, but it's it's not one that you get to control on your own. You you have to develop that as a family, right? The family has to find that balance, that working balance. And it's just like a dance or, you know, playing football or basketball, you know, the, the team has to work together and practice those things. So it becomes smooth and a fluid operation and not a, a jilted stop, stop, you know, you don't want those hard stops. You want it to just be fluid. And that, that does just take time and practice, but setting boundaries is, and schedules is number one. Uh, it's interesting you talk about that balance. Uh, in the next week, though, I interviewed Maury Sheckman recently. He's, uh, you know, he's a he's an author, he's a teacher, he's a business consultant, and we we had this very discussion. and And he used a term uh, that I hadn't really heard too often as it relates to this, but it was a a blended family as it relates to business. Right? You have a blended life. He goes, you know. It's BS that you can say, I, I turn work off at five o'clock when I get home. There's no reality to that. Yeah. You know, the reality is whatever happened in your day could carry over in your attitude, whether you're in a good mood 
Are you in a right. bad mood? Or if you've got a big project the next day, it's a stressor or whatever that means. He says, you know, there, there's no such thing as turning it off 100%. You may have right. windows of opportunity where you can do that because there's something important that requires all of your attention. Because, But the reality is we've become blended now between work and personal. And it's how you manage that blended life is what's important, right? And, and to your point, you know, it's how that family unit works together because we're a team. We're all in this together, right. you know? And I, I just really like that description of what it was um, in, in Maury's mind from an educated perspective. Like we're more blended than black and white. I, I love that. And and Maury, you know, being a psycho, a trained psychoanalyst. Yeah. Right. He, he gives you that different perspective. But, yeah, I really like that. I haven't heard that blended, but I can tell you because my family is a blended family and blended families can actually be stronger than other families. And it's because we've learned not to take certain things for granted. You know, we, we've made those mistakes and, and we can come out of that in, in much better ways sometimes. So I, I think that we just need to approach that work life balance. And you're right. You don't get to shut it off. But you, if your family understands how your job works and what your part is in that, I think it's a lot easier for them to to be able to to go with that ebb and flow of your moods. You know what what you're bringing home from work doesn't just stop at the door, but they can help you brush it off and help you keep it in perspective. Sure. Right. What's really important. Well, we're pretty transparent at my house with my with my young kids. They're seven and nine now. Um, but you know, they know, Hey, dad's going upstairs or they might say, hey, dad, do you have to work upstairs tonight? You know? And, right. and so we're very communicative here on what needs to be done. We respect the parameters. Uh, just a couple other tips before we move out of the distraction topic, um, a couple tips and tricks for those listening. You know, what you might want to try to do is if you listen to music, listen to non lyric music, maybe, uh, uh, they can buy binaural beats or symphony type stuff, but, you know, low tones, so you're not getting wrapped up in lyrics. That, that's helpful. Uh, you can also take uh, two minutes before you start your day. And I want to talk about this next is, is meditation. Um, but other little tips, you can turn your phone off. Right. You can literally turn your phone off. It doesn't have to be on, especially maybe you've got a project uh, that you've been working on, you, you know, and you want to eliminate distractions. Leave your phone in the other room or just turn it off so that you're not compelled to check your Instagram or your text message or whatever. Give yourself that clean time to get your work done. And if you really are working on a project, maybe it's a Word document, uh, you can turn your notifications off on your computer, turn your internet off on your computer, and just focus at the, on the task at hand so that there's no clutter or distractions. Um, so there's a lot of little things that we can do because the reality is, Rod, you know this, we all know this, you want to check your phone, you hear this, you want to chase after it. And next thing you know, you burn another 20 minutes on nothingness, you know, or picking the right song with the right lyrics to get you going, you know, or another cup of coffee. Uh, right. There's a lot of little things that you can catch yourself doing to eliminate the distraction. You're right. And I think the easiest one, because this is the distraction for most people today. Yeah, yeah it's not just the younger, the younger generation. Oh. It's all of us. It's, oh. it's a part of our lives. But you don't need all those notifications, you know, and if you're on a, a text stream with people and, and there are 20 people on a text stream and everyone's responding, you know, and, and someone might respond half an hour later and it dings, boy, turn off that notification. It gives you the it gives you the option. Yeah. And who's in control? I guess it, it gets down to we did a, a thing a while back on addictions and who's in control? Does this thing have more power than this thing? It shouldn't, you know? Yeah. So it's it's a tool. And like any tool, you know, you could a hammer can put in a nail and it can do it right. But if you hit your thumb, you know, that tool's not necessarily being used it to its uh, best advantage. So, you know, utilize the tools. Yeah, really good point. Well, let's give one more final tool for the show. And uh this is something we talked about on Monday night with our Young Entrepreneur Syndicate. You know, we, we talk about all of our calls. By the way, if you're not a member and you're just listening to the show, really would encourage you to take a look at it. 
Uh, the entry fee is, is not asking a lot for the value that you get. And what we're doing is building a foundational of tools. Speaking of tools, building a foundation of tools that you can utilize not only in your everyday life uh, outside of work, but at work, especially if you're an entrepreneur or what we like to call intrapreneurs, where you're trying to excel and achieve your goals and objectives. So we talk about all kinds of fascinating topics. And uh, because Rod is the uh, the smart one of the group, he puts <laughs> together the curriculum and, uh, you know, and we feed it to one another. And, and I have the task of talking about meditation on Monday night. And, you know, when I got to the the task list, I'm like, I'm hitting myself in the head, Rod. I'm like, why do I have meditation? But upon further review, I, I knew that I'd recently interviewed a couple of key uh, people like Dr. Uh, McKay, who's was on my podcast. Her show comes out this week. Uh, talking about the power of the mind and meditation and safe spaces. I'm also reading a book uh, that talks about it. And the reality is your mind is so critically important to take care of. And sometimes it just needs a little break. So, um, you know, we talked about meditation and what that means to uh, us as entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs and people in general. And and Rod, you had a, you had a perspective on it. And so why don't you share some of your thoughts on meditation, how important it is uh, to your happiness and wellness. Well, I, I don't do it enough, but I, I I do, number one, I focus on gratefulness. You know, if your mind is one of those like mine where you, you want to clear it out and you you want to just, you, we need that clean space, right? We need some blank space to, to start over. And it mine will, well, I could be doing that. I should be doing this. Or you, you think about this, that, and the other thing. Go back to just being grateful. Think about what you can be grateful for. It's like, okay. I lost focus. I'm going back. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful for my work. I'm grateful for the pets I have. I'm grateful for my car. I'm grateful we have running water and don't have to go to the river, right? <laughs> Got a bed to sleep in. You know, we have so much to be grateful for and just start going through that list and that'll clean it out a little bit. It'll quiet your mind down from the distractions. And that that's number one. But the meditation, it is so important, Jim, and I'm glad you brought that up because it, it we have to take care of our mental health as well it, and everything else follows from that and if you ever have a problem with your computer what what is the first thing you call an IT guy you call the, the department say hey i've got something going on the first thing they say is did you restart it <laughs> did you reboot it did you turn it off and turn it back on almost all of our electronic devices it's that simple just reboot it and so taking 2 minutes to start with, to reboot. That's really what you're doing is you're just saying, okay, I'm shutting everything off for a second and then I'm gonna turn it back on. That's all. If you look at it that way, we do this with our devices all the time and yet we forget. And then you end up calling IT and the guy tells you, did you reboot it? (laughs) So we're telling you now, reboot yourself. Just two minutes, just clear your mind out. Just think about what you're grateful for and then think about nothing if you can. Two minutes, that's all, start there. Well, and look like you, I, I'm not a meditation person as a, as a rule. Um, I've done it a couple of times, especially after I had a guest on my podcast. She walked me through a meditation. Um, I can see the value in it. But what I've been doing to kind of ease myself into it is I'll put my headsets on. I'll, I'll listen to some you know music without lyrics and, mm-hmm. and just kind of tone out the outside world for a few minutes and, and hone in on maybe one particular instrument, you know, whether that's the violin or the piano or something, and just allow my mind to relax at the end of my day. And um, I've, I've found some value in that. And I know that I'm easing myself into um, a true, truer form of meditation and, and, you know, taking a few minutes of kind of a deep process meditation. But I can already see some value in being able to ease out of my day that way just by focusing on a little bit of music for a couple of minutes, non-distracted, everybody's in another room and I find value there. So, so you're right. You got to reset those batteries. Right. And again, find the white space on your calendar and just schedule it. If it's scheduled, if it comes up on your phone as a reminder, beep, beep, you know, two minute, you know, reboot, mental reboot. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the the music one last time here. I know we're, we're at our time limit here, but 
Interesting that you mentioned that, that you focus on just one instrument. That actually will bleed into your daily life, too. You'll be able to fine-tune and, and pull out the noise and all the distractions. You will hear the birds singing. You will be able to hear that. My wife will, will be listening to music, and I'll say, oh, can you hear the piano in the background of this or the bass on this? And she's, how do you even pick that up it, to just you know, peel it out and say, that's what I'm focused on? But you can. You yeah. can train your mind to to you know really start looking at the details. And the more we focus on those little details and just let them you know meld together, but be able to pull them out, it's going to make us better people, and it'll make us better business people as well. Yeah, great deal. Well, look, we caught we talked about holiday balance, distractions, and some meditation. By the way, one one other tool that I didn't mention we did we we talked about this Monday night. And that's what I call the power list. And it's something that I uh, have borrowed from Andy Frisella over there with the Real AF podcast. And the power list is basically pick five things every day that you want to accomplish. And once you've accomplished those five things, your day could be done because these are five important things. And if they're things that you want to build a habit of, can keep them on your list until you've built a habit of that. Then you can drop them off your list and put something else on there. So maybe it's meditation is number five. And it's on your list for two months. And then you realize, hey, this is a habit. You can drop meditation off and then add something in its place. But oftentimes, like what I do, Rod, is I, I make a mix, right? So right now, meditation is one of them. Making 10 sales calls a day is one of them, right? Doing this task to, to take my business to the next level is one of them. It might be a menial task too, like finish up a contract. But I know once I get done with those five items, I've accomplished the most important things for the day and I can move on. Now I can move on with other tasks or in the scenario we talked about today is holiday balance. Maybe right. I do need to spend some time Christmas shopping or with the kids or going to that Christmas program or whatever. Um, I know I've done what I needed to do for the day and I can disconnect and feel good about moving on to the holiday experience. Right. So uh, right. I think that's a great tool. Um, I did think of one other thing I needed to bring up. And it's because I talk about it often. We haven't covered it in one of our entrepreneur shows. But in my book, The Freedom to Say Yes, I have one chapter dedicated to the holiday advantage. And I don't want that to be misconstrued as overworking during the holidays. It is exactly what I just suggested is utilize your power list to accomplish things at all times during the year. But really, you can hone in on it through the holidays. And what I like to do during the holidays is oftentimes family members, they overeat, they like to sleep in till noon, or they want to watch all these holiday shows or watch the football game. Those things don't necessarily appeal to me. And while they're tuned out doing their thing, oftentimes I'll do what I enjoy. And that might be doing a couple work tasks or writing another chapter in my book or writing a blog or something to uh, move my business forward in the direction that I feel it should be going. So to me, I call that the holiday advantage um, while not doing some of the things that others do. Uh, and by the way, giving my family all the time they want. When they get sick of me, right. then I use that as my time to go to my office and you know maybe write another blog or another chapter to the book, right? So I just wanted to throw that out there. Rod, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that, but um, that's why I talk about the holiday advantage in my book. I, I think it's great, Jim, and I, you've put that into more practice. You've had more opportunity to do that in different ways. What I've gotten in the habit of doing during the holiday season is I'll go through my my phone list, right, yeah. my contact list, and during the holidays, I like to go through that. And people that I've not talked to, you know, that, and I, I don't send out Christmas cards and stuff. I don't do a newsletter and all that sort of thing, but I will send a personal message to people in my contact list. And, and I can literally, if you want to play on your phone for a couple hours, reach out to people. Reach out to people in your contact list and just say, hey, I was thinking about you. I hope you have a great year. You know, keep in touch. And you have no idea what a little water on those seeds will do. Somebody just might need to hear that. So, you know what? Uh, I'll be transparent on my power list. Reach out to an old friend is a constant on my power list every day, every day, because of what you just said, Rod. And, and that is, they might need to hear it, 
Or like you said, it could be a little water on those seeds. And I'm reminded on, on how important that is, is when, you know, somebody reaches back and says, man, it's so good to hear from you. You know, you've been on my mind or I could use some advice or, hey, I want to do some business together. And we don't realize how disconnected we can get. I had somebody call the other day, old friend. He says, Jim, are you still in the consulting tequila business? And I thought, well, yeah, I've done more now in the last three years than I've ever done, right? But because of our disconnect, he didn't even realize I'm still in the business and he needed something, right? right. So talk about watering some seeds. You know, I could probably be watering my seeds a little bit more often so that people don't have to wonder if I'm still doing what they're looking for. So uh, anyways, uh, if you can find your balance, maybe you can take a little advantage of the holiday uh, break times here and there and get yourself in a good, in a better place. But, um, great discussion today, Rod. I want to, I'm going to add one last thing to that too, because, you know, it's when we reach out to those people and during the holiday season, this is the, the yin yang, right? The, this is the most critical point for people suffering from depression and suicides is during the holiday season. So that reaching out literally could save a life. So really reach out. Uh, you you have no idea the implications that you just touch and base with someone might have. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that conclusion. That's a gr great reminder. Well, look, if you're listening to the show, we appreciate you. And again, check out the Young Entrepreneur Syndicate, and that is youngentrepreneursyndicate.com. We've got a wonderful library of business books that uh, – it just goes to Amazon if you want to click on one of those links and buy a book. But these are things that Rod and I have read. They're things that we teach on, talk about. We have found a tremendous amount of value in those books. And that, that's why that library is compiled. But also our membership includes so much more than that. But it brings you a part of a group that um, uh, just with my call today, Rod, one of the members was talking about the work he's doing with another member. And nothing pleases me more to hear that. And, and that's what we're all about. We're not about just having members. We're about having active participants in their business and in their lives. And we're a part of that. We get to play a role in that. And uh, we would love to have you. So check us out, youngentrepreneursyndicate.com. If not, just listen to these shows. And if you like the shows, share them with somebody. And we can spread this word a little bit uh, further and faster. One last thing. We also have merchandise on the Young yeah. Entrepreneur Syndicate. It's a Christmas season. If you don't know what to get somebody, how about yes? You want to get people saying yes. So we've got uh, Young Entrepreneur Syndicate, yes, merchandise, and uh, just in time for the holiday season. How's that for a shameless plug, Jim? I was going to say, Rod, that sounds a lot like a commercial, but I will tell you, you know, we're talking about the, the power list. We've got a great notebook on there. You can write your five things down. So, all right. All right. Rod, I will talk to you next week on the show. Thanks for tuning in.